Welcome to the 6th AG screencast on grid computing brought to you by the Direct User Support Team. During this screencast we will discuss job collections, parametric jobs and finally DAG jobs. These different job types let us group several individual normal grid jobs into a large workflow and allow us to submit the whole workflow in just one go. A job collection is pretty much self-explanatory. Several JDL files, each one describing a simple job, are grouped into a folder and the user may submit this chunk of jobs with a single glide wms job submit command using the flag minus minus collection. To demonstrate this job type, I will log into the user interface where I have prepared a simple example. Inside the folder named jdl-collection, I have three JDL files, each one describing a simple grid job. The first one asks for the host name of the worker node. The second one echoes the string hello world to the standard output and the third one queries the operating system version on the worker node. Notice that these three jobs are totally independent of one another and may thus run on totally different resources. Before submitting the job collection, I create a sort and proxy as usual. I then submit the job collection with a single glide wms job submit command followed by the flag minus minus collection. I also store the job identifier under the file name job.id. To check the status of my job collection once it has been submitted, I may use the glide wms job status command as usual. Notice that in the output of this command, both the status of the whole collection as well as the status of each separate job in the collection are displayed. Once the status of the job collection is in the done success state, I can retrieve the contents of the output sandboxes of the separate jobs with the glide wms job output command as usual. I store these results under the folder named results. As you can see, a file named ids underscore nodes dot map has been transferred from the wms together with my results. This file contains the mappings of grid job identifiers and jdl file names. Now I can view the results from the three separate jobs in my job collection and as you can see in the first job I have the host name of the worker node my job executed on, in the second job I got back the string hello world and in the third job I have some details regarding the version of the operating system of the worker node. In contrast to a job collection, a parametric job consists of a single JDL file that describes in itself a group of simple grid jobs that differ from one another in the value of one specific initial parameter. So, in essence, a parametric job spawns into several normal jobs that will execute independently of one another on grid resources. Each one of these jobs carries a unique value of an initial parameter that is defined by the user. Let us demonstrate this through a simple example JDL file we have prepared on the user interface. Notice that in the attribute job type we define that the type of the job is parametric. We then give the name of the executable that accepts as an argument one parameter. We then define the starting value of this parameter, its step size and the total number of parameters, which obviously equals with the total number of separate jobs that will be submitted through the WMS. Just to keep things clear, we also append the value of the parameter to the file names std.out and std.air. To submit this parametric job, we use the glide wms job submit command as usual. To check the status of the parametric job, I use the glide wms job status command as usual. Once the status of all separate jobs has reached the done success state, I may download the results using the glide wms job output command. Notice that I store the results under the results folder. Once again, a file named ids underscore nodes dot map is created by the WMS allowing me to keep track of job identifiers versus JDL files. As you may have guessed, using this parametric job I have calculated the first 10 elements of the Fibonacci series using a simple bash script. To get the ninth, for instance, Fibonacci number, I only need to view the output of the std9.out file. Let us now move on to discussing the DAG job type. DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graph and it is a job type we may want to use when submitting a bunch of jobs that need to be executed in a predefined order. Instead of managing the intermediate steps of redirecting the output of one job to the input of another job by ourselves, 
the DAG job type performs all the necessary management through the WMS. We will demonstrate the DAG job type through the simplest example possible, where we have two simple jobs that need to be executed in a specific sequence. The description of the DAG job is given in the DAG.jdl file, where, as you can see, we denote that the job type is DAG. Next, we define the separate jobs or nodes in DAG terminology as normal JDL jobs. The node Peter, which is the first one, simply echoes the string on the standard output file. The node Anna then picks up that standard output from Peter and uses it along with the shell script reply.sh to provide a reply to Peter. This reply will be written in the standard output of node Anna. Notice that we explicitly need to define that node Anna is to be executed after node Peter, otherwise the output of node Peter may not be available for node Anna on time to process. We submit the dark job type with the July WMS job submit command. To check its status, we use the July WMS job status command. Once the status of the overall job reaches the done success state, we may collect the output with the July WMS job output command. As we can see, once again, a file with the name ids underscore nodes dot map is created and saved by the WMS. I can now view the contents of the peter.out and anna.out files. This concludes our screencast on job collections, parametric and dark job types. During our next screencast we will discuss a few basic concepts of MPI and submit a few MPI jobs to the grid. Until then, thank you for watching.